Um, so, so let's start with you. Are you're obviously healthy? You look fantastic. Um, <laughs> so, what? Um, I'm curious because you are so many things. You wear so many different hats. You're a mom. You're a lawyer, performer, recording artist. Um, and you recently posted on your social media that there's always time to find new ways to live and love, which I love. That's what I feel like this pandemic has been about for me. Right. So what have you learned about your family, your husband, yourself <laughs> <laughs> during this time of quarantine? <laughs> Look, and not only my family and myself, but the people around me. Um, <laughs> You know, I've learned that uh, everyone responds to crisis different. Mm. And um, it's so important for me to respect how different people respond to what I think, you know, is an exciting time to, to really look back on what you've done um, so far in life um, in the last three months and figure out how it's going to be better when you go forward. Um, and it, so it, it, for me, it is trying to take my mind frame of happy, let's make this work. This is some crazy, not so good situation, but there's something good coming out of it to meshing that with people who are, uh, you know, taking it, um, really slow. Like my husband, he's actually taking it in stride. Um, we have both continued to work. We've been blessed um, in that manner. Um, and, and so uh, we've been able to like communicate, I think on a more uh, intimate level because we're in the same space. We have like our separate offices, but you know, it's fun to go over and say, hey, what's going on? Hey, let's go for lunch, <laughs> which is downstairs. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then my kids, they're in college. And so for them, they are learning how to do this online learning, which I think is very hard. I think people take for granted that college students will just get it like that and they won't. So like I had to have a session with them on what this means and what our expectations of them are in that process. Because um, when the pandemic started, they were on spring break. And so they came home and we had this huge family meeting. We had these games we played. And then my husband and I made the decision to let them go back um, to their apartments. And that, um, that was tough. Um, so all the parenting decisions that we were making um, and also uh, honestly how they've stood up to it, how they have responded. They you know, get on the phone, we talk more, you know, and we have our FaceTime, uh, meetings, we've had birthday parties, um, you know, remote with uh, family. It's just, um, it's been, it's been different. Um, but, you know, my, my, my outlook is always try and find good. Um, and even the worst situations, because it's there. And when you can find just that little, you know, semblance of hope um, it, it, and, and keep building on it, uh, you'll really find out what's happening in this world because this is not new, right? This this idea of a, of a, a catastrophic uh, event affecting millions of people, the concept is not new. So how we respond to it, I think, really dictates how we will become better people as a result of it. And I do think... Um, we talked about this before we went on camera. Mm -hmm. um, I just turned 51 before the pandemic, so but I didn't really do anything. I just stayed with my family and we had a low key thing. But I feel like when you're older, when you hit that 50 mark, you just can handle things better. <laughs> you just, it does, yeah. <laughs> I think that's right. You know, I've, I've read a lot of articles about how women, um, you know, 50 and older don't take a lot of trash. Don't, don't, you know, they don't, uh, it, it's almost because you're at that halfway mark, arguably of life. You've seen a lot, you've been through a lot, you know what you like, you know what you don't like. Mm -hmm. And, um, and as a result, you either sink or swim, right? 
And, and I'm not saying that um, it's bad if people, um, you know, are suffering or not figuring out how to do this, because I'll be honest, I, I had a few days where it was a bit much. Um, and in those days, I just did nothing. Mm. And I, I made it okay just to do nothing, uh, to, to, to lay in bed um, and, um, and move when my body said, get up. Uh, I made uh, a point not to do it like for four or five days at a time, but I think it's important for you to, uh, to know who you are. And then, uh, so, so uh, there's going to be phones ringing. Let me just warn you. <laughs> Even your devices are musical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have, because uh, you can imagine, I am actually still in the middle of my work day. And so <laughs> this is my lunch break. And, um, and the world doesn't stop uh, as a result of, um, you know, anything. And, and that's how it's always been before this pandemic. I have always been, um, I think, coexisting in every facet of my life. And mm -hmm. I think that's important. I, I, it's not, uh, I do this or I do that or I do this. It's not that. I do everything because I was given those gifts to do that. Well, and I'm wondering, there's a lot of, um, you know, I've spoken to a lot of my friends and um, who are parents. My children are older, so I have a senior in high school and a college student, a junior in college, but I have a lot of friends who have little kids and they are um, learning how to juggle their work and family and find that balance. So talk to me about finding the balance because you're working, you're a lawyer, you're a performer, you've got a family. So how do we as women find the balance? Because it's tough. <laughs> I don't believe in the concept of trying to balance it all. Um, I have told people before, I, I, it's, a, it's a recognition that um, you are here to be a creative, to be doing something um, in all, all aspects of your life, your family life, your work life, your community life, your passion. And I feel that uh, you, you have to look at it like a Rubik's cube, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you have to shift um, things in each of those different faces of the cube, if you will, of your life in order to get a single color or all the colors at one time. Um, and you have to be flexible because if you think about a Rubik's Cube, uh, when you're shifting, you're turning in different directions, you're turning in different manners. And, uh, and the way to figure out how to turn and when to turn is, um, knowing what you are, where you've been, and where you wanna go. Now, I know that sounds like really simple, but I actually mentor a few people and I have this thing called um, reflect, project, respect. And I feel that this time that we're in is the perfect time for many people to go look back at what you've done. Again, I, I'll keep saying this. Uh, I have a process in my life where I look at the previous week I can get to the end of a week and feel like that was the most crappiest week of my life. And then when I sit and look back at what I did every single day and see where I either was smiling or someone blessed me or I was able to bless someone else, at the end of the week, I don't feel so bad. It's not a crappy week. I'm alive um, and, and I'm doing it. So I think it's important for us to reflect. And if people aren't taking advantage of this time to go back and see what, 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 what worked in your past, what didn't work, what relationship is not good for you, and then project on how you're going to make things different, how you're going to make things better. Um, and then the whole respect part is that you are alive because we have so many people we've lost, right? Um, there's somebody who knows someone who did not make it in the last 30 days in the last 60 days. And it might not even have been because of the, the virus. It could have been because their life time was up. No one knows that moment, no one. And since you don't know, right, it doesn't take a pandemic for you to realize that life is not guaranteed. 
Mm. You don't know. Now is the time to stop. You've been given time. Go back and look and see what do you need to do different? Well, and we were talking about hitting that reset button or hitting, you know, defining, you know, I, I, a lot of people call it your second act. My mom always says you're in your second act. I don't feel that way. I just feel like I'm always reimagining and redefining and. But you have <laughs> That's what we do in theater. I mean, how many times have we been in the show or some kind of show? Uh, as a matter of fact, I can tell you, I was in a show <laughs> and uh, the, the director came in with this idea of how this show was going to be done. And we were two or three weeks into that rehearsal process and it was a bad idea. It was bad. Um, and, and we had to reset and we were like opening in like a week and a half. And so we knew the lines, but we had no, we had no foundation. We had, we, what were we going to do? And in that, like last week, we pulled it together and figured out with, again, the direction of the director, thinking differently, how to make it, how to make it work. Um, so it, it, this is not a new thing for, I think, us in theater, in the, in the creative world of, of where you have to improvise and, um, you know, pick up and figure out how to make something work that just wasn't working before. We do it all the time. And that's the thing, I think people forget People forget that we are resilient. We're resilient. Mm -hmm. right? And that we have the ability to change how we think about something, um, a role, a uh, particular situation. I mean, all of us have been in, in, in again, crazy situations, especially in theater, <laughs> where we had to do something different. You know, mm -hmm. someone falls off the stage. What do you do? You know, you, you figure out how to keep that show going. <laughs> I was in high school, I went to a school of the performing arts and um, in one of the shows, my, my uh, dress fell off. Don't talk about a costume malfunction. There was no way in the world we were not gonna finish that number. So, you know, it's just like anybody, you pick that dress up, you wrap it around and you do what you have to do to get done. You might've been embarrassed. You might've, you know, done something that, uh, you know, didn't make the show look good, but in the end of the day, you recover. And that's what we have to do. We have to figure out how to deal with the stress we have of today um, and uh, assess what it is and see how to make it work for us. Well, and I think that is what the arts does. The arts teaches problem solving. So that's why I think that arts education is so important, whether we're whether you want to go into the arts or not, I think the arts is important for learning those problem solving skills, making it work, <laughs> becoming resilient, rolling with the bunches. Yeah, yeah. Does, does a time like this, you know, I've spoken to a lot of artists who, some of them are jumping and, and this is a period where they're nurturing their creativity and then others are just kind of feeling like their creative spirit is hindered. Right. So for you, is this a time of um, nurture or hindrance of your creativity? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's a, it, for me, it's a time of nurturing, um, but it's also a time of discovery. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it's a time of figuring out um, uh, how to do things I didn't think I could do. Um, but wow, I can do that and I can do it well. So my self-confidence in, in areas have, has grown. Um, I was joking earlier about, um, if you notice, I may have a little uh, shimmer on my eyes. Um, it's because <laughs> something I normally never do. Um, I started uh, playing around with makeup with my eyes and I, uh, and I got that confidence because I called a woman who no normally does my makeup and just sat with her and said, you know, talk to me about my eyes and uh, you know, what I can do to enhance them. And one of, the, one of the things she said to me was, just keep doing it over and over again and playing around with it. And, and the beauty of it is, I really don't care what people think about what I've done um, because I'm learning. And, and there's some confidence in knowing that you can pick up on new things and, and become better. I've started working on my music theory. Like I can read music, but I wanna be better at that. 
right? And so now I'm, I'm actually like, you know, doing exercises associated with that and testing my, my skills in that area to become better. And the new thing I've come up with is that, you know, uh, some people may say that I, I am a perfectionist, um, but um, I, I'm, I'm not a perfectionist. Uh, I, I've come to learn that iteration over perfection is to my advantage. So I'm just doing it over every day, over again. If my husband laughs at me. I, I, I've never sat in front of a mirror this much of just, let me see how this is going to look. Okay, great. It, it, you know, so every day is a new day. Like you guys got a little, I don't know, a little pinkish something and <laughs> well, <laughs> one day I just put on lashes. <laughs> And there's um, a, what I love a, a, a about, you know, you, you speak to the Girl Scouts a lot, and I love that you do a lot with the Girl Scouts because I spent a very long time as a Girl Scout leader when my daughter was growing up. I, I was the cookie mom and the Girl Scout leader, I think, for seven or eight years. Um, you gave a, chat, a speech recently to the Girl Scouts. There's a difference between confidence and arrogance. So when you talk about confidence and building your confidence during this time, what is the difference between confidence and arrogance? Because I think when people, a confident man is different than a confident woman and confident women are awful, oftentimes. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother session. <laughs> <laughs> whole nother session. We, we would have to have a whole nother conversation about how men and women are viewed different as yeah. far as um, yeah. confidence. Yeah. Well, confident women are often called names. <laughs> Not so because, uh, usually, usually if a woman is being called arrogant, it's because the person who's calling them arrogant is not confident. Um, and I know that sounds facetious, but m quite often a woman who is confident um, in what she um, is doing has a lot to do with her ability to... Um, feel comfortable um, in the gifts that she's been given. It's, it's not a question of can I, it's will I and how will I do it? Um, and the arrogance comes in the idea that you did it by yourself, um, that you did it with no one else's input, that uh, you are self-made. Um, and so it, it's, it's, it's humility. It's, uh, there's no way in the world Yolanda does all the things that she can do, without the fact that, you know, her mother introduced her to this world of the arts, you know, um, and supported her along the way, that um, her family, you know, came to the shows um, or allowed her to wear a wig when she was a little girl pretending she was Gladys Knight and singing for the people who came up to the house. Um, or the director who saw in you something you didn't even see. And, and cast you in that role because they believed in what you were doing. Um, or the teacher who says, you know, you are smart, but I'm going to challenge you and push you further. So it's, it's the idea that all these things that I, my mother has always said that a village raised me, right? That, that I am the product of many people who have poured into my life um, to make me confident that I can do and be anything I set my mind to be. So me talking to the Girl Scouts is uh, really giving back uh, to, to young women who I believe with leadership qualities or desire to be leaders um, can become and be anything they set their mind to. So I'm just trying to give back what was given to me because I believe everybody has the capacity to do the things that I'm doing. Um, they just don't believe it yet. Well, and, and one of the happiest theater experiences I've had recently was coming to see you at um, Nina Simone. <laughs> and my mother and I were sitting in front of your mother. <laughs> and your mother was just beaming. <laughs> that is awesome. You know, um... Because my mother is probably the, one of the harder persons the, to, um, I don't know if the right word is please, um, <laughs> but that standard of excellence that she has given me to reach to that level, um, to know that uh, people have observed her say, oh, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
realize, uh, yeah, Nina was, that was one of my challenge projects, right? That was, uh, I had a lot of lines to learn, I had a lot of music to learn, and I was doing it in the midst of life. You know, things didn't stop. And, uh, and I remember saying to myself, the success of this is not just sharing this amazing story about this amazing woman, but it's also living up to what I say is possible. You know, and, and so part of that uh, takes planning um, and uh, a lot of improvisation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I... Except not, not, not on the stage, because I can tell you my stage managers were no joke. If I, if I veered from a word, if I changed a lyric, now I'm a singer. And so sometimes when you're singing a song, you feel a certain way you want to, if I veer from a lyric, I, I got like slammed. So came to the stage, I couldn't play around that much, but um, in life, you know, my husband, again, somebody, he's very supportive. Uh, and he will tell me in a split second if, <laughs> if he doesn't like something or if he thinks it should be done different. Um, but uh, yeah, I've, I've had beautiful people, even yourself, um, you know, what you're doing now for the art, for the arts, um, for the community is, is amazing. It's not just talking to us one-on-one, -on -one, but the idea that you have other artists talking to um, <laughs> you know, creatives. Um, I just think it's brilliant because everyone has a different perspective and you're gonna get different things from people based on who's asking the questions mm -hmm. um, and, um, and the topic. And they're all over the place. It's not just, you know, the, it's not directors only or actors or people who've been on Broadway or people who want tours, but you have theater owners, you have um, writers of magazines. I mean, it was, it's, it's just, it's brilliant. And, uh, and so thank you for that. See, that helps me because I've listened to them and like thought, yeah, you know, the coloring. Um, the coloring. Uh, uh, she was wonderful. I have this, I, I don't color, right? Uh, someone asked me, what don't you do? I don't color very well. Um, but I have this coloring thing where I know how to color in the lines and just the idea of, you know, doing that, uh, it's just intriguing. It's, it's, it's really intriguing. She's so. very, you know, and a lot of it, you know, my husband's like, well, what does that have to do with Raleigh? And I'm like, it doesn't have anything to do with Raleigh, but it interests me. And so if it interests me, it might interest other people. <laughs> and so, I, when I saw that, I pulled out my, like, I, I had this coloring book thing with the little different pencils. <laughs> I pulled it out. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> We're, we're all going to be coloring over the weekend uh, because I don't like puzzles, but I didn't mind coloring. I'm not a puzzle person. But I'm not a puzzle person either. I, I, I can do puzzles, but if I, yeah. And, and if you guys don't know what we're talking about with the coloring, um, a couple days ago, I interviewed Andrea Fuller, who um, runs Coloring Broadway, and she was talking about mindfulness and musicals and coloring. And um, if you haven't watched that chat with Andrea, please do, because it's, it's really about mindfulness. So the key thing about that is the mindfulness part that mm -hmm. I think we really have to focus in on during this time. And that is take care of this. Because um, in as much as there are 7,000 Zooms to attend um, and uh, movies to watch, <laughs> um, if we don't take that time to be quiet, and to really remove ourselves from um, the screens. And that's even with the work. If you don't take that time, then I think that you, you can get burned out. And the last thing you want to do in this pandemic time is to get burned out. Because it, 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 I hate to say it, but everything is going to start back up. It's going to be going like this. It's going to be fast and furious. And my fear is that we will forget what this is. Mm -hmm. I think this is a reset to say, hey, 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 this is normal. What we've created is chaos. And if we're gonna go back to the chaos, because somehow or another we will, remember what I taught you in this time, right? So take this time to do the yoga, you know, um, to walk, outside, um, you know, to sit in, um, in silence mm. and, and, and reflect.
can't say that enough. Reflect, reflect, reflect. Reflect. Um, so Natasha, your stage manager, yeah. <laughs> um, she, um, she says she's seen you walk up to individuals after performances and encourage them and support them, not even knowing them. And she wants to know what drives that spirit in you to do so, because it always appears to be so appropriated, it, appropriate. It, it's, it always seems to be such a welcome thing. <laughs> so, so what drives you to encourage other performers? Uh, honestly, I think mainly someone has always been there to encourage me. Um, and also, uh, I feel that we are all connected to each other as human beings. And that part of our purpose is to help each other become better um, in everything we do. And, I, and that's generic. It, it works um, for me and my family. It works for me in uh, theater community stuff. It works at work. It works. Because why else are we here? It, you know, well, well, I, I, when I was little, I was the one who asked my mother, you know, like, why do we have stars? You know, what is the moon for, I mean, why are we here? And, and, and then I would, I would freak myself out. I would get to this point of, what if we weren't here? What if I didn't get to experience this? Mm -hmm. So maybe I ought to take advantage of every moment that I'm here. And if my, 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 my privilege is to be around people, right? And to be able to talk to people then, and to connect with people, then what am I supposed to be giving them and them giving me? That's why I love theater, because we have the ability to tell these stories that actually hopefully enhances someone's life, that um, gives them hope, that gives them, that gives them understanding, right? They know why they're going through what they're going through. That's even when I'm singing songs, I think, <laughs> why am I singing that song? Uh, so to make a long story short, I just feel we're connected to each other. And um, if someone's energy um, after a show is, uh, is open and, um, uh, I don't know, it comes to me, then I, I share. Now that's not to say we don't have bad people in this world. Let me be clear. Cause we do. There are some crazy people. Um, but that's when you have to, that's when you have to withdraw, right? That's when you know, you know, you cannot be in a certain space. That's why I respect um, actors who choose not to come out after a show, believe it or not, um, because if their energy is not right, it doesn't need to be in the space of people who just received the message of the show. Mm -hmm. Because the show's message is bigger than you, right? Than your fault or whatever that is. Um, and, and then sometimes there are people who are just negative and ugly and nasty. And you have to be careful of those kind of people and just steer away from them. Because... Mm -hmm. Because they exist. My dad always calls it toxic people, getting rid of the toxic people in your life because they're the people who bring you down and make you feel bad. And and the key thing about that is toxic people doesn't mean that they're evil people. It doesn't mean that they're nasty. And I think that's really important because you can have someone who is toxic, but mm -hmm. they're beautiful people. They're just toxic for you. Yeah. And you have to know that for you, that energy doesn't work. And, um, and it's okay um, to, 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 to identify and separate. It's okay. I've done that. Well, and that brings me to the spouse question. <laughs> <laughs> because um, I think, you know, you, you talked about your husband. And my, I, I always say, I can't do what I do if I didn't have a supportive husband. Uh, absolutely 100%. And he, um, he gives me constructive feedback. It doesn't always feel constructive, but it is constructive, um, especially with the podcast and, and a lot of these interviews. And then he is the one to lift me up when I need the lifting. Um, you, <laughs> you posted on your time or on a social media, marry the right person, this one decision will determine 90% of your happiness or misery. And I, I totally feel that. So I have a lot of young people who follow me on social media. So, so what is the secret to a happy marriage for, the, for all these young ones? Because I think finding the right person. 
um, discernment um, and you get discernment from prayer and you get prayer from God. Um, I just think that for us, uh, there's always been a third person in our relationship. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, we yield um, to advice and counsel uh, from him. And I know that sounds like cliche, you know, but I, the other night I, that my husband said something to me that actually uh, didn't sit well. And I prayed, I actually prayed about it. And, uh, and I was very specific in my prayer about what he said, why I didn't like it. Like I had this like, you know, just plain conversation. And then I prayed for everything I wanted, um, I thought could be helpful. And about two days later, <laughs> um, this is like a real story. Two days later, um, uh, something happened. I'm trying to be like, protect the innocent here, but uh, something happened. And he said, wow, how did that happen? And I said, I prayed about it. And uh, he was like, hmm. So, you know, I, I think that, that definitely is part of it. And then also you gotta, you gotta like the person. Um, and, and in order to like them, you gotta listen. And uh, so my husband just last night gave me, like you, advice. Um, that was really good. It was really good. And, and I think if I hadn't had the quietness to just listen to it and take it in, I would have like, I would have blown that. It was, it was, it, it, it's all, it's, it boils down to respect too. Um, I respect what he has to say. My mother told him when we first married that, uh, you know, Yolanda is very, she, she, she sets her mind on things that she will do it. And so you just gotta be weary of her. She's going to, uh, go on the stage and she's gonna be a stage girl, know that. And, and cause I said to my husband, uh, it's just me and you, babe. None of that theater stuff, none of that stage stuff. My mother was like, don't listen to her. She doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't know what she's talking about. And, uh, and then um, I, I said to him, I had another mentor who said to me, your first year of marriage is your most important year. It is a year that you do not let anyone else in it, in your decisions, in your anything you do. No one else. God, that's it. No one else. So in that first year of marriage, we promised each other that our decisions would be our decision alone. That was probably the best, best thing we ever did. Um, and in that first year, I, I actually didn't do theater. I didn't do a lot of whatever, but listen, on 366 day, I was auditioning. Let's be clear. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I was, but he, he, he said he knew all along. That's who I am. And so it's so important to be with someone who knows all of you. I had a friend in, in, uh, in law school who was an amazing, beautiful singer and her fiance, hated her singing. She was an amazing singer. And right then I was, I, I was like, it's not gonna work. And long story short, they didn't end up together. But that one fundamental, that's something you can't overcome. Someone not knowing who you are and appreciating it. So for younger people, if you like to do dance or you're a social media person or whatever, whoever you're with has to be with you in that. And if they're not, they're not the one, I'll tell you that. Um, one thing I've loved about our, our chats in the past is you're not only a good artist, but you are a good business person. <laughs> you understand business and the business of this industry. Yeah. And something that came up in my conversation with Jonathan Burke, um, I think it was Wednesday, Mm -hmm. was um, mm -hmm. somebody asked, what realities do you wish colleges would teach young performers starting out? Mm -hmm. And his answer was, I wish that colleges and performing arts programs would teach young performers the business side of this. So talk to me about the business side of this industry, because I don't think we talk about that enough, <laughs> and how young performers can hone their business skills. So I, I'll tell you, I'm gonna be really frank. I'm gonna say that in order for a young performer 
to uh, take advantage of anything I'm going to say, you have to want it. You have to want to know it. And I feel most often the younger folks don't want to know it. They just want to be stars. They just want to make it. And, and I think anytime that's going to cloud, it's going to cloud your, 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 your uh, perspective because there are things I, I know now that if you had told me 10 years ago, I would not have listened to you. I wouldn't have listened. And that now I know to listen. So um, that's my philosophical side. Um, the courses are there. You can take accounting. You can take, you know, um, uh, reading. I'm not trying to be funny, but <laughs> you can take so many basic classes, basic classes that just gives you the foundation of things that you ought to know. If, you, if someone says they're going to pay you a certain amount and that's lower than that, that's math. Um, and so you can have all the business courses in the world, but if you're not even interested in knowing it to apply it, I think sometimes it comes from bad experiences that you figure it out. When I was younger, I've, al I've always said I wanted to be a lawyer, but um, I did a show in high school and we had contracts and everything. And I was reading my contract and, you know, I was this and the people still pulled out and didn't do the right thing. Right. Um, and we didn't get paid. And, and I read that contract. And so the next step is what to sue them. So a lot of it is, is the savvy of it is knowing the people. It's, mm -hmm. it's actually emotional intelligence. It's actually knowing when you are getting ready to work with somebody who was on the up and up or not and seeing it from afar. Um, so that, don't get me wrong, you, you, you get the business courses in line, but part of this business that we're in, this theater, this music industry, is more about people than it is about the underlying um, pieces of information. A, a person comes in and they go, here's your contract. If you feel like you can trust them, knowing they have done people wrong, why are you working with them? You know, when I first came to this area, I really, you know, wanted to be this professional actor and get my, you know, reputation status because I was this kind of actor. And uh, this person uh, promised me an, an equity contract. And they said, just come to rehearsal. And I was like, but I'm only going to do it if I'm equity. This is like a long time ago. And, uh, and they were like, oh, yeah, I got you. They, they FedExed me the agreement, come to rehearsal. And if you know equity rules, you don't show up to rehearsal until you see the contract beforehand. Um, and it took me going online, looking that up, and knowing they were lying. Right? And there's no course that could have taught me that necessarily. And again, at this age, these younger folks, you got to want to not be tricked. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so colloquial. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should be more. You need to want to have the right thing happen to you in your life. Um, I think Jonathan is correct. I think we can have more courses. But I think there's something we need to inject in these kids about. Um, looking at the bigger picture of life and the purpose of why they want to do what they're doing. Some people want to do it just for the applause. And don't get me wrong, it's great. It's a wonderful feeling to hear it and to have it. But I think when we, we move them to the idea of the reason why you step on that stage is because you have a purpose to heal someone, to help someone um, by giving them hope, or understanding or love or whatever, uh, when you get that part of it, then everything else starts to really make sense and matter. And, and one of my favorite quotes from Maya Angelou is, um, when people show you who they are, believe them. <laughs> and you were resilient. You were resilient. I, again, I, I have been in, in situations where things were promised and they weren't there. Do I stop being me? No, because I'm, I'm gonna be diligent. The business part of it is important because I don't know if you know this, but um, Nina Simone was produced by my company. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's probably the uh, biggest secret. It's not a secret, but um, uh, my production company actually produced that show. And so while I was the actor, 
I was also the business manager, um, making sure that all the contracts were in place with the stage managers and with the the people who were doing, you know, um, costumes or the director, all that. That that was the business side of it. And so it, it would be so funny. And this is where a stage manager is beautiful. Right before rehearsal, I could talk as much business as I wanted, but as soon as that clock ticked, I was on stage as an actor. And 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 so I had to separate the business from the acting. And so. It is important to have it. So I'm now I'm all over the place. Is it, it is important to have both. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I think that my maturity, if you ask me, I don't know, again, maybe 15 years ago, would I have done this? I don't know. I'm like, no, why? Why? And I think that having probably the importance of pushing business savvy to our young folks now is good um, because ultimately you want to be able to continue to produce beyond people producing for you. Um, we were very blessed that that was an amazingly successful um, show. And so behind, I was behind the scenes and in front of the scene um, to make that happen. Mm. Well, and I, I think when things aren't working well behind the scenes, it is reflected on the stage. You can kind of tell things are kind of messy on stage. Oh, they... good. Thank you for that observation. Then maybe, uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I feel that way because sometimes you'll see a show and you're like, there's something just not right. I mean, the performances are fine. The music is great and everything's fine, but there's something not working. And I, I think it's, um, when things aren't working behind the scenes, you, it, it's, it reflects on stage because performing is all about trust. And if you don't trust the people you're working with, then it's going to come off. Well, I think that, I think you raise an excellent point. Um, we had an amazing team with the director, with Kathy um, Hunter Williams and Howard Kraft, um, uh, Vivian um, at uh, Finesh at uh, Playmakers. Um, and uh you know, there's so many people I can name. So I want to start naming people and then stop and miss people. Oh my God. But um, the Arts Council, you know, we had Carly Jones and um, Kima, uh, all these people, those are the people who were helping us produce it from one side. Um, and they were all good people. So even though things weren't like flowing timely as we wanted them to happen, um, we were working with good people. And that's where emotional intelligence comes in, I was saying before. And that's where knowing that you're working with people on the up and up matters. Um, because when you're dealing with people who are not uh, on the up and up, you have to have your stuff together. That's it. You just really have to have your stuff together. And uh, that's where the confidence comes. I knew as an actor, I didn't, because we were producing this, um, our company, I didn't have time not to know a line or I didn't have time not to have my stuff together. So I started rehearsing, I started like getting into Nina Simone really months before I probably normally would. Um, I started planning for things to go wrong um, so that if they did, if something was off, um, I, I could roll with the punches, I could improvise and still be the best that I'm supposed to be on the stage. Um. Speaking of good people <laughs> and not good people, I don't want to get too political on these chats, but um, I'm going to go there for a minute. Oh. Um, I know you are an executive speaker and you speak on leadership a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think in the midst mm -hmm. of this pandemic, we are seeing some leaders like Governor Cuomo just kind of rise to the occasion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're seeing other leaders falter. <laughs> um, so what makes a good leader? What does effective leadership look like? Because I think that's something we can learn in this time period, watching our leaders. <laughs> well, I think we have to recognize that um, there are different kinds of leaders. And so there's not like one perfect type of leader. Um, and right now we are in a crisis. So the, the leader for a crisis is going to be different from a leader in normal times. And, and I think that's why you see such a stark difference in what our, you know, leadership looks like across the board. And you start getting opinions about what you want. 
And I think <laughs> nowadays we need leaders who um, um, can speak with uh, radical candor about what's happening. Um, and in still a sense of hope, a, a sense of confidence, and a sense of, um, of uh, what's the right word? Uh, knowledgeable authority. Mm -hmm. um, so that you believe what they're saying. And, 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 and I think that there's been faltering all over the place. I mean, if you keep looking at every single one of the people who are stepping up as leaders, it appears. Um, you know, at one point I thought the media was taking uh, a, a stance on leadership to be more thoughtful and how they were delivering news. Um, and, uh, and I told my husband the other night, oh, we're getting back to normal. <laughs> yes. Yeah, things are changing. <laughs> so I think that, um, it, it, you know, I, I actually, I'm going to say something. I wrote something down the other day that I was thinking about. Um, there's, I, I think that one thing about leadership, I will say that I, I often look at is if, if there's a leader who does not admit to their mistakes, I'm more worried about them than I am about others. And so a leader has to be accountable, which means if you do something that is not right or that um, is questionable, it's okay to acknowledge it and seek to be better, um, to seek to improve. But if you say it didn't happen or you deny um, accountability, responsibility, then I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna turn my eye up at you and say, really? I'm not, I'm not gonna trust you as much. That's why, I, you know, especially in theater, I love to work with directors who, who are going in a particular direction and change their minds or <clears throat> something tragic happens and they act on the spot and, 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 and work to make things happen. Recognizing that's a tragedy, but this is how we're gonna deal with it. That's leadership. And, 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 and that goes to a leader is someone who can influence you to follow them in the midst of chaos and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and follow them for a good purpose, for a good reason. Yeah, always positive. Get a, there always has to be some good, um, some good. So your social media, your Instagram profile, because we're we're getting close to our our one hour mark, and you have to go back to work because you're working. <laughs> you're still working. <laughs> Okay, so, so your social media profile on Instagram says wife, mother, singer, songwriter, actor, corporate lawyer, executive speaker, not done. Mm -hmm. I love the not done part because that's how I feel. Um, so what's next? Ooh, uh, I actually am recording uh, right now. Um, and I had started it right before, uh, right before things started stay at home. Thing, which is beautiful because I'm, I'm in listening mode now, um, trying to figure out what's going on. Um, and uh, I am writing music, um, so that's exciting. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I am, uh, oh gosh, there's so much. This is the thing about me. I know things that are gonna happen in five years that I can't talk about. Um, but that's the beauty of the reflection part. If you asked me 10 years ago, would I be where I am right now? Or would it have taken so long for me to get where I am right now? I'd have been like, I'm done, I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, and and I, I challenge people, this is where my hold on to your dreams comes. If you have a dream, you gotta hold on to it if it doesn't happen overnight. There are some people who are overnight successful. There's something about going through the journey of getting to where you are so that you appreciate it when you get there so that you hold on to it, you know, that you, um, you, 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 you become smarter and wiser um, and able to detect good from bad easier because you've been through it. I know people who have access to stuff and they, they, they don't see what's in front of them. Like, don't you see that that's, a bad person or that's a, a bad situation. They don't because they're so enamored with the glamour of, oh my God, I'm on TV, I'm doing this. Um, I've been through a lot, right? So the success you see in me has uh, a lot of, uh, 
uh, tears and um, and quietness and why and uh, and I, I I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. I've learned as much from my failures uh, that I have from any applause that I can get on stage. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm not done because, I mean, hey, I just learned how to, you know, I'm not even gonna tell you some of the things I've learned how to do. <laughs> but I will tell you like, no, I will tell you this joke. I am like an IT expert. You can ask me anything about computers. Like I knew computers before, but I've become dangerous. Um, so <laughs> I've become dangerous. Over this pandemic, what has it been like three or four weeks? What? Yolanda can do some things with a computer. I just want you to know. I know I've already had some skills, but I just told my husband, like, I, I'm a reader. So I have been like reading a lot and then applying what I know. I have, a lot of times I don't have time to do that, but I've been able to apply like little tiny skills. Mm -hmm. This pandemic, I'll tell you very quickly. Um, I have uh, canceled subscriptions. I have, um, you know, stopped, um, I don't know, uh, my habits of doing things a certain way because it just wasn't, it wasn't conducive of good. You know, I'm always asking myself, is that good for Yolanda? Is that good for the world? Who is that serving? Or if, do you have control over what's going on? Because if you do change that, if you have no control, sit back and see how you're gonna respond so that it doesn't harm you and it doesn't harm anyone else. Um, but I'm always looking for uh, a way to, to give through all of my talents, hope. I think that's why I was born. I'm, I'm here to connect people to their next. So I don't get upset if I don't get a role. You know, you go into an audition thinking, oh, I'm gonna get this. I learned a long time ago, it, whatever's mine is mine, no matter what. And then the timing that it's supposed to happen, that's when I'm supposed to get it. Because I'd rather get it when I can appreciate it than to get it and squander it, you know? Um, so, most people are not done. Most people have an unlimited amount of gifts that you can use to become things that you've been dreaming about. And it's happening. I can see it on the internet. There's some people who shouldn't get on the internet and sing, but that's another story. But um, there, are, <laughs> there are some amazing things that are coming out. Um, there are people who are sewing, right? That have never sewn before. And now they're like mask makers. That's a beauty, <laughs> you know? Uh, like, did you know you had that talent? Uh, and now you've been given the time to flourish and do things that you hadn't thought you could do before. You have time to do things you didn't think were possible to do. Use and the time, time is a gift because we're all running around saying we don't have time to do anything. So and time I've been telling, and what I have, been, what have I been saying? You absolutely have time. The fact that people don't think they have time is why you're not using the most of all the gifts that you have because someone has told you you can only do one thing. Mm -hmm. Someone has told you, you know, or your gift is there. People will tell you where your gift is and then tell you, don't do that. And I've had it happen to me at work. I've, I've at work, and this is really important for people who like maybe in the work side of the world, who I've had managers who came to me and said, um, I don't want you working in this area, which is where I was really gifted in like changing contracts and doing certain things because we want you over here. But my gift was there. I'm really good over here, but my gift is over there. And so what I did was I took um, discretionary time and worked on that thing that I know I'm good at. Because you know what? It didn't take any time to do it at all. I blink when I do that because that's my gift. And when it flourished, I ended up getting a division award and getting all these accolades because I was working in my gift. Work in your gift. It actually will give back to you and then give, give you room to do other things. So... Um... I know the last question, I know that music is such a, an important part of your life. So what's on your pandemic playlist? <laughs> hmm. I listen to, believe it or not, Billy Porter has a song called um, Time. Um, I, think, I think it's called Time. I, it's actually on rotation. I just play it over and over again. It's beautiful because the concept is, is what is time? You know, is it, is it the, the leaves? You know, is it the hugs? What is it? And, and actually it's the, the, the in, ending of the song is that all we have is time. So time is what you make of it. And uh, so I actually have that song over and over again that I play. Anything uplifting, 
Um, sometimes on my Instagram, you'll see some of those songs I've thrown out. Um, Sounds of Blackness have a song that says, um, be optimistic, right? So keep your head to the sky, um, you can win. Uh, that was one of my theme songs in college and in law school. It was keep your head up because we are, we are made to be happy. We should strive to be happy. I don't know, somewhere someone said you should just be miserable. There's a pandemic going on. Just, just conquer down, stay home. No, find life, you know? Find out who you really are, what you're made of, and then be the best that you can be. Uh, I said in my little notes to myself, I said, I am improving versus impressing. You know, we should get, get over this idea that I have to impress you for you to like me. I don't, I don't, I don't have to do that. Uh, my job is to improve myself so that I can be better at what the gifts I've been given um, at uh, to do what I'm supposed to do so I can give hope. I love that. Well, thank you for spending lunch hour with me <laughs> and all of us. Yeah. And, and I, I, I probably could have given you more stuff. Well, I cannot wait to hear your new record, your new album, a record, I'm aging myself, but your new album. Ooh, you froze up on me. Um, but anyway, I, I can't wait to hear, I know a lot of us feel that way. Can't wait to hear Yolanda's new music. She's frozen up on us, but um, I want to thank her for joining me. And, uh, you know, she's, she's really a gift to this community. She's one of the many talented professional working artists we have here. So thank you, Yolanda. And